For patients with adrenal failure, prednisolone 4 mg once daily is the perfect replacement as it gives the closest profile to the circadian rhythm. This shows some prednisolone profile curves. We start with 4 mg once daily and check levels and if they are too high, cut to 3 mg once daily with the protocol that can be found on this site. Manufacturers of other expensive steroids are worried about how effective this is and are trying to discredit prednisolone. The title of this study suggests that prednisolone has a worse lipid profile than hydrocortisone, but if you look at the data, in fact you find the opposite is the case. Let's look at this data. It was done in 19 centres in four countries and they basically looked at prednisolone between 3 and 6 mg daily and compared it with hydrocortisone 15 to 30 mg daily. And they found that there was a higher cholesterol and a higher LDL in the 47 patients on prednisolone compared to hydrocortisone. But cholesterol and LDL are not known to be put up by steroids. HbA1c is however, but for this they found no difference. They found no difference in the BMI, they found no difference in the systolic or diastolic blood pressure. So things that are known to be put up by steroids were not increased and they did say there was no differences in these things. However, at the bottom, the conclusion says that there still were significantly higher LDL levels and they then say that this could predict a higher risk of disease for these patients. The dose that was used of prednisolone in this study should have been between 2 and 4 milligrams, but this is in less than 10% of the patients. Most patients were on between 5 and 6 milligrams daily, which is much too high a dose of prednisolone. So, they gave 5 milligrams of prednisolone daily compared to 21 of hydrocortisone. And what did they find? First of all, the BMI was the same, and if anything, slightly lower in the group on prednisolone than those on hydrocortisone. Similarly, the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure were the same, and again, if anything, slightly lower in the prednisolone group than the hydrocortisone group. In fact, there was no difference in many of the things they measured in the entire study, including the HbA1c and the triglycerides. So they used the wrong dose of prednisolone and basically found no difference, and if anything, a better B blood pressure and BMI in patients on prednisolone. But they chose to ignore that and instead focus on the incomplete data here for only 36 patients, which found a total cholesterol of 6.3 compared to 5.4, and an LDL of 3.9 compared to 3.2, and thus concluded that prednisolone might be harmful. Why they did this is not clear. Now, if you look at the actual data, it's incorrect because in the abstract, they say that they found a higher cholesterol in 47 patients on prednisolone. But in fact, they didn't do that. They only had cholesterol data on 36 patients. So the abstract misinterprets the data in the actual paper. Now, this is a bit unusual and difficult to explain, but it might be because the study is funded by Shire and they're concerned that prednisolone might be a direct competitor with their drug Plenadrin. And I think the correct conclusion should be that publication and sponsorship need to be viewed with caution. We have therefore repeated this study and found the opposite conclusion that prednisolone is basically safe and effective. Here is the data. 3.7 milligrams daily prednisolone was the average dose. This means that 5 mg is certainly excessive. The only difference that we found was that the patients on prednisolone were significantly more satisfied than those in hydrocortisone, and they happened to have a better weight hip ratio. So our final conclusion is that prednisolone 4 mg once daily with fludrocortisone 100 micrograms once daily is a safe and effective starting treatment for adrenal insufficiency.